Hey guys, it's me, Crazy Honda Chris in the sales department here at Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And here behind me, I have a brand new 2024 Honda Pilot Touring. So let's show you all the cool standard features and functions right now. All right, so here we are at the window sticker. You guys can see it's a 2024 Honda Pilot Touring all-wheel drive. You guys are welcome to pause the video right about there if you want to explore your own. Now you guys can see on the top right hand corner, it talks about your fuel economy. You got 19 for the city, 25 for the highway with a combined of 21. Down on the right hand corner, we usually have safety ratings. Right now it's not rated or to be rated. You'll find more information online or as time comes along. It is a US made product. As you can see, Lincoln, Alabama. The price point, And then the list of the standard features and functions, which we're gonna to try to cover today. Now, American Honda does have a surplus charge for particular colors, like for example, the Platinum White Pearl. There is a $455 surplus charge for that color. I'll also throw some additional color options up there. Then also there's gonna be a surplus charge for that color. So you guys be fully aware of that. It comes down with two key fobs and a remote start. To use your remote start, all you have to do is hit lock, hold this button down for a few seconds. You're gonna see the lights gonna flash there. There you go, we received it. It starts right up. The lights will flash again to let you know, hey, I have started. The doors will remain locked for you and it will run in 10 minute intervals. So after 10 minutes, it automatically turns off. Let's say if eight minutes have passed, I need a little a wee bit, a little more time. I just repeat the process. So it runs for the grand total of 18 minutes a third time. No, 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 it will not work a third time, okay? If I change my mind, I wanna turn it off now, just click and hold that button down again. And then it just shuts it right off, okay? Now we have a 3.5 V6 with a uh, automatic transmission. I'm gonna throw horsepower and torque and everything right up there so you guys know what you're playing around with. You are going to have 5,000 pounds of towing capacity with this. So if you guys can kind of put a hitch on that, you know uh, the towing capacity. All your Honda sensing features come standard. I'm talking about your lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, forward collision, road departure, and traffic jam assist. So safety is pretty much his middle name. As we go on throughout this video, you'll see there's even more safety features on Ravel. So now you're going to have front and rear parking sensors. You have a buddy colored parking sensors right up here and right up to the side. You got a little chrome action going on within the front, chrome, you got a little chrome eyebrow, and then you have LED lights, so that means your daytime running lights. And then your headlights and your tail lights. Nice big beef kind of grill up there. Wipers are gonna be underneath the hood line. Then we'll step here off to the side to those nice alloy rims. Check those out We're right about there. So you have 20 inch alloy rims come standard we're going to take a step back here off to the side profile of the vehicle i'm also going to throw some exterior measurements up there so you guys see how it compares to other vehicles in this market or maybe show you guys this current vehicle will it fit in the garage stuff like that let us know down in the comments now as we're looking at the side profile you can see you got a nice little two-tone down below that's going on with the cosmetics you got body colored handles body colored side mirror there's going to be have a turning indicator integrated within that you have a nice gloss black finish uh, roof rails that come standard rear tinted windows then a little chrome action on the bottom half of the windows and there's a nice blacked out finish along the top all right so here we are with the side mirrors they can be a breakaway side mirrors if you need to fold these bad boys in you can simply push them in and out that's all right your turning indicators right over here too as well on these side mirrors, you're going to have your blind spot information. So that's going to be more of your safety features. There's a little indicator. That's going to come up bright orange when the vehicle's in your blind spot, when you go in the appropriate speed at 20 miles an hour or faster. All right, so that's going to be for your city and highway driving. So here we are in your blind spot. That's going to light up when you have your turning indicator on while somebody's in your blind spot. It's going to flash and beep at you. If you guys want to see that in action, I have an older video that will show you guys that, okay? So if you haven't experienced it doing your test drive. Now, we're also gonna have a smart entry system with the vehicle. So let's say it's all locked up. I got the key fob in my pocket, my purse, my jacket, put my hand in the handle, and unlocks the door for you. You can choose you want all doors to unlock or just the driver's side door. Then I can also keep this in my pocket by locking the car by putting my thumb down on these lower ridges. There we go. I walk away. I know the car's locked. I can also have the walk away auto lock feature enabled. All right, so just want to take one less step out. I got the key file with me. The car's off. I shut the door. I get 10 feet away. Boom, it locks all the doors. I never have to second guess it. I lock my car doors. Did I not or anything like that? You cannot accidentally lock your keys in the car. 
the card knows uh, the order, the sequence, how you do certain things. Like, hey, there's a key in here. I open up the door. I hit the lock button. All right. The door is open while I hit the lock button because I have an old habit of hitting the lock because I have my door open and I shut it. I was like, whoa, hold on there, Batman. You got a key in here. So it automatically unlocks for you. Okay. Now, if you want to purposely lock a key in a car, like for example, my wife and I, we go out, she has her key, I have my key, my key is in my pocket, hers is in her purse, but she leaves her purse in the car, right? I shut the door, I literally have to dig out my key fob, hit the lock button, it registers on purposely locking the key in the car. That's your kind of work around on that, all right? So there we are. All right, so it's a capless gas tank with the car's unlocked. This pops right open. You can see there's no longer a cheap cap to worry about fixing or replacing. It's a simple slide and go. You're living the dream, all right? Then we're going to take a step here back to the side or the back. So once again, we got those LED taillights. This makes a bold statement for safety when you apply them to the brakes, of course. Then we got a little bit of badge of honor. We have a lot of stuff going on down here. So let's kind of start from the... Uh, bottom and work our way up you can see we got some nice chrome tipped exhaust dual tipped chromed and then we're gonna have parking sensors maybe a body colored we got four of these bad boys back here they also have low speed braking control so with your low speed braking control as you're backing up to an object of course your parking sensors sound off go beep 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 beep, beep, beep the closer you get but also with the low speed braking control it stops you before you hit something too so that's kind of a nice additional bonus feature especially in the parking lots now we got a little badge of honor going on right down up here. You can see it like that touring. And then of course we got to advertise what you're driving. It's a pilot. It's all nice, kind of right there in the gloss black finish. And then all wheel drive badging down here. Now of course you got a wiper on the back hatch, and then it's gonna be a power lift gate. So you can open up with this on the key fob, or you have a bun down here below. You're also gonna have the hands-free power, power tailgate. Let's show you guys that in action here quick. See if I can get it down, down on the first try. So you simply have to have the key fob with you. The car can be on or off. Just have the key with you. You come up, you do a little kick motion right underneath the bumper, and then there we go. It opens, you can use that to close as well. Super easy. I'm also gonna throw some cargo measurements up here so you guys know what you're playing around with. So you guys gonna know if there's enough room for wherever life's gonna throw at you. Now also with this bad boy, you're gonna have a little button right here. You can hit this. So once it's green, it's enabled. When I walk away the key, away from the vehicle, the hatch closes. Let's open this up and talk more about what's back here. So as this kind of opens up, it's gonna be reversible. So if you wanna protect the carpet, you can. You simply grab this, you throw this right in here. There we go. Pop this back open. You got a place for that second uh, seat, that middle seat there in the second row actually comes out and this is where you can store it. I'm gonna throw some photos up there so you can see what I'm talking about. So if you want captain chairs, style right there in the second row, you're good. A little cubby space off the side for some additional storage. You're gonna have your strap here to tie down that seat. That's gonna be right in here so it's not bouncing around as you're driving. So this once this is unlocked, you got some little additional stuff under. You got those, you got a jack, capless gas tank, funnel. Sorry, you got an emergency funnel here. So if you have like a gas tank that have ridges on in those, um, they get stuck in those capless gas tanks. Okay. So you want to use one of these, and you get just got the tools you need just in case for this, you know, flat tire and all. Now to access that spare tire, you have to pop this down and you have to ratchet out because the spare is going to be right here underneath the vehicle. Let's get down here quick. As you guys can see, there it is, the spare tire. All right, seats will fold down pretty nice and easy, just like that. There we go. Take a look at what's back here. You have a USB-C port, adjustable vents, cup holders, of course. Right over here, same thing, cup holders. You got adjustable vents and then a USB-C. And then you have a little cursey tie down. So if you have these seats down and you have something back here, you don't want to be jumping around, damaging any plastics, you can tie it down. Third seat belt, if you ever need it for the third row, it's going to be right up here. 
Once again, you have the LED lights for the interior. We're gonna pop this up, let go, pull up the headrest. Now you do have a headrest right here in the middle. That pretty much is gonna be the back. Now we also have a height adjustable power lift gate. So let's say if I want to set it where I want it, I just have to click and hold this bad boy, wait for the double beep. There's the double beep. Now it will open and close to that setting every single time. Let's move it back up for the tall people. I can close it by hitting that button too. Now there is gonna be an additional button here. Let's see if I can reduce that glare. There we go. So once again, this button's gonna open up the hatch, but then you also got this little button right here. A lot of people are like, what's this button for, Chris? So, remember how over here on the door, when you have the key fob with you, and you can lock everything up by putting your thumb right here when you have the key fob? That's the same concept. So let's say, family, everyone gets out of the vehicle. I'm the last one here, and I don't have my walk away out of lock enabled, you know, just because I don't want to. That's fine. So once I get everything out of the car, I'm the last one done, I hit this button. Then it automatically locks all the doors. So last one I'm out of, that's what that button's for. All right, before we dive in, I'm gonna throw some interior measurements up there so you guys know what we're playing around with. Is there gonna be enough room for your friends, pet, cargo, or whoever's brave enough to tag along with you guys? I hope the answer is yes. Now as we're checking out the door here quick, you have a nice leather, nice little two-tone going on right over here with a nice little black going on, gloss black finish. And then of course you're gonna have a little sunshade action. Keep that nice bright light out of your eyes or them. So we have a uh, cup holders, a little tray action, a little more cubby action down below. We'll come right over here to get to the third row seat. You just have to click this button. And then it slides the seat forward. And here's that third row seat. Now they're also gonna have a button back here. So let's see the passengers get out. These guys, you don't have to wait for you to let them out. They can just, and there we are. Now these seats, you can fold these down with that. And here we are. I like saying here we are apparently today. Sorry about that. Now these are gonna be adjustable. They can slide forward and back. They have a squeeze bar right underneath. This will come down. Once again, it does come out. But there you go, you can fold it down. You got a little tray action cup holders. You can simply fold that right back up by pulling this. And then this is gonna be a two hand job. So just simply grab that and pull it right up. Now, for those that have car seats, you don't have to dig down under and underneath or anything. They're all nicely exposed. So it makes it pretty easy to hook up car seats on the fly. Carpet mats come standard. We have courtesy pockets right back here uh, behind both front seats. You got a little place for the phone and tablet. And once again, right over there too as well. Climate controls, so we can play with our own climate. We have a couple USB-Cs back here and adjustable vents, so we can keep ourselves comfortable and entertained as time goes on. Third seat belt, if you ever need that bad boy, it's right up here for the second row seat. driver's side door let's open this up take a look at the driver's side door once again you have the leather nice little two-tone going on back here again we got two seat memory you guys know about power mirrors you got your mirror selector between left and right the d-pad to adjust windows you got your window lock button right up here sorry i said windows these are your power windows here guys all right, so you got power windows, you got your window lock button just in case you know what misbehaves. You can lock them out so you can play with the windows. Then you got your power locks uh, from there. Then your windows, uh, mirror selectors, and then you can adjust your D-pad for your mirrors, okay? All right, now we're back on track. We're gonna have a, a little cubby space, a little more tray action down below. We'll come back over here. We're gonna have power seating. You can slide forward, you got your back, you got your up, you got your down. You got a little tilt action on the front half, as you can see. You bring that back down, recline, then your lumbar support. You got your pedals at A to B. Then you're gonna have your hood release. It wraps right around. We're gonna pop that, take a quick little break. Then I'm gonna show you guys what's under the hood. All right, so see you in a second. 
here we are right underneath the hood. Let's point out those little details you guys might do on your own. For example, we've got washing flutes, a nice blue cap, easy to find. What else is easy to find? The dipstick is a nice bright orange. Oil cap right over here. Battery connection right down below. Brake fluid, and then a fuse box. Anything else beyond that, I'm calling someone to come see me so you guys may know a little more from this point. So once again, for those that have the capabilities of working on their vehicles, do one more look over here quick for you guys. Now, if you guys have more advanced questions, feel free to contact your local Honda Service Center. I'm sure they'd be glad to assist you guys with those questions. All right, so there we are. Let's get back up front. All right, so here we are right inside the Honda Pilot. So you have the key fob with you guys in the vehicle. It could be right there in the tray, in your pocket. There's somewhere in the vehicle. From there, we're going to simply apply into the brake pedal. The button's going to light right up. Hit that and watch everything turn on. Now over here on the left-hand side, we got your power lift gate button. You can't just tap it and let it open. It, it doesn't want it to open on accidentally. So you have to click and hold that button down for a few seconds, and then you can open and close from there. Next button is going to be your vehicle stability assist or your traction control, what keeps you on the road. If you ever get stuck in the snow, or mud, or something crazy, you can click and hold that bad boy to turn it off. You get the little icon down here to let you know that your vehicle stability assist is off. But we're going to turn that back on because we don't need it off right now. Now, we're going to back up here at the steering wheel. You can see it's a nice leather wrapped wheel. You can have a release right down here below. As you pull that bad boy, there we go. You can push this in. You can pull it out. It goes down. It goes up. You guys get the point just as you see fit. Then lock that right back in place. Now, as we're looking at the wheel, you have all of your Honda Sinton features over here on the right-hand side. First one I'm going to be talking about is going to be your cruise control with your adaptive cruise. So, when you hit this button, you get one of two icons. You get this one right here with the little speeder meter in a car and an arrow action like you're locking it in place. That's your adapted cruise control. Or the second option you'll see is going to be your standard cruise. Now, to switch between the two, all you have to do is click and hold in this button here and it switches from there. All right? Click and hold, it switches. Now, adaptive cruise control is going to keep you in sync with the car in front of you. So, for example, let's say we're going down the road. I'm going 45. I set my cruise control by hitting the toggle switch, toggle down. They go. I lock it in place. I'm going 45. The car in front of me is going, I don't know, let's say uh, 43. It finds a car in range. Beep, beep, beep. The car beeps at me. You turn that on or off. It slows me down to maintain that distance. So, it keeps me in sync at that distance. And by selecting the distance, all you have to do is tap. I can talk today. Just tap this little thing right here. You can see those lines up there changing. More lines means further, less lines means closer. All right, so a car gets in range, it slows me down, maintain that distance when they get out of the way, beep, beep, beep. You turn that on or off once again, and you resume back to your cruise control speed, okay? So that's gonna be your adaptive cruise. Now, this right here, it's gonna be your traffic jam assist and your lane keep assist. This is what keeps you in the center of your lane as you're driving down the road. Your traffic jam works between 25 to 45 miles an hour. Your lane keep assist works between 45 to 90 miles an hour. So that's gonna be more for your highway driving, all right? So there we go. That's gonna be Honda Sensing features. When you're actually, when it's actively working, that's all gonna be green and green to get a visual confirmation when it's actively working. Now you got your paddle shifters, we'll boom and we'll boom. You got your wiper stick right over here. You can, it's gonna be adjustable in men. You got your low, you got your high. So if you turn it down to in men, you get your rear wipers, a simple to automatically twist to spray to clean the back. So if you wanna miss the front, you just gotta pull it up towards you. You got your lights right here. This said auto, fog lights off. Now fog lights are on. It's pretty nice and easy. And right up here, you got your little controls for more of your media options. So you got your volume to increase and decrease on the toggle switch right there. You got your voice command right there. So you click that if your phone's pretty like, hey, call Crazy Honda Chris, you know, on mobile phone, whoever you want to call. You got a home button. We're going to talk about that in a second because that's going to be going through the navigation on that. So you can switch your radio stations from there. So that's going to be more of your media controls, all right? As we're talking about this stuff here quick, let's actually kind of thumb through this. So I'm going to be using this wheel, scrolling up and down, and headed home to back out. First thing I'm going to be talking about is that pushing the wheel to your driver's attention. So the car knows the difference between you doing a bad job at driving and the wind blowing you around. So I'm assuming when you're doing a bad job at driving, you probably want the car to do everything that's power to alert you. Say, hey, Chris, pull over, take a break, take a power nap, take a cup of coffee, 
you know, that kind of stuff. So if I was to get to that point, it'd be one red bar right here to let you know. Next one's gonna be all drive torque. So you can see where all of your all wheel drive torque is going to, where the power is going as you need it. Lifetime feed right there. Seat belt, you can see who's sitting where and not wearing a seat belt. Here I am, it's red X, not wearing my seat belt. Let's see if I plug in the front passenger seat. There we go, it turns out to be green. Maintenance. This could be like your oil maintenance and other stuff in that point. Tire pressure. You will have a direct tire pressure monitoring system. It's going to tell you for each pressure for each tire. I have a video to show you how to reset that or how that works when you're filling up air in your tire. So check out my tire pressure video. Safety supports. So that kind of goes hand to hand right down here with this little icon down below. I can see that everything's enabled because it has a green car with a gray circle. And if everything was enabled, the whole thing would be green. If nothing's enabled, it would be all grayed out. So as I push that in, it looks like someone already turned off the road departure. We're going to turn that back on. Then we're going to scroll down. You can turn off your blind spot information. You got your low speed braking control. So with your low speed, as you're backing up, I've had an object in the parking lot that actually stops the car for you before you hit it. You got your parking sensors, and then your forward collision. If you want this to be blank up here, no information, there we go. Or then if you just want to change your speed distance from miles per hour, you have to click in that wheel and hold it, and then it changed it. You know what? We're going to go back. Brightness, you can adjust the brightness of your driver's interface screen. Once you kind of get to your Y, you push in the wheel, then it sets it. Gauge display, you can choose what kind of apps or kind of, you know, what we're going through right now. So everything that's white, you can choose to have it enabled or disabled. Things are grayed out. It's just forced to stay up there. Then we come down to warnings, like if a door's open, tailgate's not shut, if someone's not wearing their seatbelt, those kind of scenarios. Then you got fuel and range, a range of fuel. So right now at the current gas levels that we have, we can go 123 miles before going empty. As you scroll up and down on the wheel, you can see your trip B and trip A to reset your trip A or B, simply pushing the wheel, you scroll up, hit reset, there we go. That's been reset. You'll also see a graph right over here from zero to 50. It's gonna show you a lifetime fuel economy you're getting at that moment. So as you're driving down the road, you'll see that fluctuate up and down. Then we'll come back here to speed and time. So if you guys want to do a little track, a little fun, or maybe on a trip, you want to make sure you kind of estimate correctly as a game. Like, hey kids, let's think how, you know, how long it'll take us to get there. There we go. Audio. Between your radio, phone, you get your phone paired up. You got some favorite context and stuff in there. Saved up into the car. That kind of scenario. Navigation is going to be more of your compass action. Then we'll back to here. Now, since we're back, let's talk about the layout of your driver's interface screen. So you're gonna have your speedometer right there. We have a digital one right there. You can see your gas. Right now you can see it's gonna be half full or half empty, however you guys wanna look at it, pretty darn close. We're in park, we have current miles on the vehicle, the drive mode we're in, you got a couple different options. We're gonna talk about that later on. It is 77 degrees outside. You see your safety support systems that's going on, the time, and then we have your tachometer and then information that we just talked about. Now, temperature gauge, I know that's gonna be a question for a lot of people, hey, where's my temp gauge? Is it gonna be a light that comes on, okay? So there'd be a blue light if the engine's too cold, it's gonna be a red light if it's too hot. So they kind of clean up some of that clutter and put a light up there for you, all right? All right, so here we are. We're gonna come over here to the touchscreen now. So we could have a nice size right here. It's gonna be nice and colorful. So a lot of action is gonna be going on on the touchscreen. So for example, the first thing that's gonna come up is gonna be apps. You can choose what apps you want to display or maybe hide on your touchscreen. So like it says right up here, show on home. This is your home. So once you uncheck it, those will not be up here on your home screen. All right, so you can hide some apps if you wanna clean it up a little bit. Next one's gonna be navigation. It's gonna be a Garmin navigation. You can pair up multiple phones. 
So as you get incoming calls, there we go. We can answer these bad boys, and you know how that kind of works out. We're going to have music options. We have plenty of sources that you guys can choose from. So you got FM, AM, Sirius XM. You get three months of that for free. After that, you have to contact them to continue that paid subscription. You have a USB. As you notice, you don't have a CD player, but you can download things on the USB port. Plug it, play it, and you're good to go. And you have Bluetooth and your smartphone connection. Now your smartphone connection would be like wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So it takes like your, your your navigation and music and everything displays it right up there for you, okay? So I have a video for that to show you guys a little more of that in action. So feel free to check that out if you want to. Now, as you can see, we already talked about the other sources here. That's right up there. You have your trip A and trip stuff. So you got trip A and trip B if you want to. So you can see previous. So each time I reset this, it goes to your previous, previous, and previous. So you can keep records up to three previous resets and to your guys' current one right there. All right, drive. There we go. Second page, we got general settings. Next page, we're going to have vehicle settings. I'm going to have video out there. It's going to show you guys how to customize all your vehicle settings. Right here is where you'll go. Then you have USB and AM radio. Once again, system updates. If you have an AT&T mobile plan, you do get a Wi-Fi hotspot. Clock. Just busts out the clock. Honda Link. You can check out HondaLink.com. We'll show you more uh, information regarding, depending on the term you guys are looking at, what your vehicle is compatible with and what's available. And then you're going to have the cabin talk. So this is going to be nice. So if I got kids back there misbehaving, I can use the volume right here. Um, so I'll be like, hey, Christopher, knock it off. As you guys can probably hear myself echo going through the speakers, I don't have to raise my voice. I'll let the speakers do that for myself. And then there we go. So now I'll be like, hey, bathroom stop, not for the next 100 miles. So go now or hold it. So that's going to be that right there for the touch screen. You can reorganize all this stuff as you see fit. Just kind of drag and click. If you want to move it to the next page, things like that, you can. You have a little quick save points down below. So if you want to save things, like my cabin talk, I can see I'm going to yell at my kids quite a bit because they like to argue when they're in the car. And there we are. Hit home. I can hit that button. It takes me right there. All right? So you got your home button. We're going to back up down here. We uh, have adjustable vents, as we kind of talked about. So we got these right up there, yours over there. We're going to have a nice little tray action right here in the front of the passenger. Heated seats. We're going to have dual climate. So there's one. I can unsync it. There we go. So we don't have to argue. You know, I like it cold. My wife, she likes it kind of around the 70 degrees. One of our biggest arguments. Fan speed. Different modes. You can see that right there. AC. On and off. Front defroster. Rear defroster with heated side mirrors. Air circulation. Off. Once again, if I want all the temperature to be the same, I hit sync. And so now as I adjust, everything adjusts at the same time. I can try the rear climate by rear off. That's the rear climate there. If I want to look to the rear setting and just play around with that, I can. I can also lock it. So it says lock there. So back here, they can't be uh, playing around with the climate at all. Now we come down here, we have a USB plug-in. We have a USB uh, C plug-in. We have a 12 volt wireless phone charger. A little Troy action. A bigger tray, cup holders. So we got your gearbox right here. Now to actually shift between different uh, gears, you actually have to put your foot down onto the brake pedal. So apply onto the brake pedal, then you can push the button in. So you can see it went from red from park, reverse, you pull that back towards you, it's green now. You will see it right up here, we're gonna reverse. Then as you're in reverse, your backup camera automatically pops up. So hopefully you guys can see that a little better. I see a lot of glare, so hopefully we got this going. First one down here below is going to be showing you the mode that's selected. So right now we have a nice 180 view selected. Catches more of your blind spot parallel with your building or with your vehicle, I mean. And then we're going to have more of a directly right behind you view. A 
down shot from your rear bumper view. So this is great when you're backing up how close you're getting to the wall or as you pillow parking or as you're backing up into the garage. That's gonna be off and on for your cross traffic mounting system. I have a video to show you guys that in action. So let's say you're in reverse or car's coming from the side. It's gonna beep a and alert what direction that car is coming from. <coughs> so that's just gonna be kind of open up for your parking sensors. You guys can see which ones we have. So we have rear parking sensors all the way across, and then your front parking sensors are gonna be kitty cornered. So we got a neutral, you got drive, then you have an S mode right up there. S mode is just kind of like almost like a sport mode. S mode is gonna be great for your engine braking, stuff like that. It's going up hills, down hills, and increases acceleration. Now we are gonna have a couple different drive modes. So if I kind of toggle this switch, you'll see on the driver's interface right up there, you have a sport mode. Sport mode is gonna actually shorten up your gear ratio, uh, gear ratio and it's gonna be a little more fun throttle response driving. Get a little red action going up here to let you know, give you a little vibes, you're gonna be a little speed demon. Normal, just everyday driving. Econ, it's gonna make you more fuel efficient for your highway driving, where it's most effective. It's gonna sacrifice AC power, acceleration power, and electrical power to give you better highway fuel economy. Snow. Get about an inch of snow for your city driving. Definitely put that bad boy in snow mode. You're going to thank me later. Trail mode automatically turns off your vehicle stability assist right there or your traction control as you guys can see. Or reduces it. Then sand mode. And towing. So you got a lot of stuff there. We'll put it back into normal. You have a hill descent. You have to click and hold that down. And once you do that, you get the little icon right down here to let you know it's on. You got well, the whole new screen right there, so it's going to lock you in between 2 and 12 miles per an hour as you go down a steep hill. Idle stop. I know for those, a lot of people don't like it. There's a lot of mixed feelings about it. Hey, I get it, guys. But American Honda actually gives you the opportunity to turn that off. That's going to be this button right here. We have to do it every time you get into the car, okay? So with idle stop is, let's say, the car meets a requirement, the engine's attempt, the cabin's attempt, or stuff like that. And then you get to a complete stop, right? Foot's pressed down on the brake, the car shuts off. And when you take your foot off the brake, boom, it starts right back up. The whole point of that is about fuel emission awareness. They're trying to save in the fuel emissions on that. So if you don't like it, hey, it's not a problem. Hit that button every time you get into the vehicle. You have to thank Uncle Sam for that. It's being forced on the manufacturers, all right? So everyone has it. Uh, if it does not meet a certain requirement for the fuel emissions. Now we're going to have electrical parking brake. There we are. So... You see it's engaged because the red light and also you have a brake right down there below to turn that off You simply apply into the brake pedal and then you're gonna push that right in I have a whole brake action. I have a video that's gonna show you guys that in action So pretty much when that's enabled every time you get to a complete stop It holds down the brake pedal until you uh, apply into the gas then it releases from there armrest Pops right open to a beautiful place i can hide all my funyuns my snacks oreos whatever i want i was kidding kids will not eat in the car i'll probably get in trouble you'll be the one doing it now here we have a lockable glove box steep enough challenge accepted you're good to go we're gonna have a garage store home link or a store opener buns right down here on and off for your power review mirror for your lights put it in the center so if we open up a door those lights will come on you can play with that. So we have a one touch power moonroof. So that thing will open all up. I can also slide the whole thing back. And then there we are. One touch. We're gonna have a Bose sound system. So if I haven't covered that yet, there might be a couple things I forget, like a Bose sound system. As you're driving down the road, you're gonna have a fuel efficiency backlight. So you're gonna green bar that's gonna be up there to let you know, good job, you're being fuel efficient. And when you're not, it's gone like we are right now because we're just consuming gas for being idled. You're gonna have a traffic sign recognition. So as you're driving down the road, that front camera up here uh, for like your Honda sensing feature, it's gonna find a speed limit sign, throws it right up there. 
and then also it's going to alert you when you're speeding you can turn that on or off with you can see that within my walk around video oh, sorry my vehicle setting video from there um so yeah i kind of fumbled through it for the last 10 minutes just because this is like a three-day part to just to make this video guys so i do apologize and there's a lot of motion and just a lot of stuff going on it just took me three days within this week kind of off and on to record things as i can uh, from there now if you find these videos helpful please do me a huge favor hit that like consider subscribing uh, it just shows me that these are doing it pretty well it kind of justify me getting out here and keep creating this kind of content all right all right, well, thank you again, guys, for watching, and we'll see you in the next video, and early congrats on your new Honda Pilot.